Hi, my name is Robert and I wanted to welcome you to the shop. Today we're going to be going over the 1200, which is the F203A. Um, the first thing that you would do upon arrival at a job site is that, or when you bring it back into your shop, you want to inspect the power cord. You want to make sure that it isn't frayed, that the plug's not pulled loose. I basically would inspect the entire cord. Uh, I think that's very important. With the E9 code that you get on the control panel, the vast majority of the time the hose isn't fully unwound. Uh, in a hot environment, this hose actually will get, will get crimped at the point around the wrap. And so it is important to fully unwind it. It is important to inspect it, um, make sure there's no debris in it or nothing sitting on it when the E9 message occurs. Another thing or another consideration with this hose is, and this unit with this pump, is that this hose can run uphill 20 foot in a 40 foot radius. Um, so if you're getting, you know, if you're getting the E9 code, that's a consideration. If need be, and you have to access the interior of the unit, I start by laying the unit on its front or its belly. I remove the two screws on the back of the unit that attach to the blue cover. The next thing that I do is I take the unit, I turn it upright, stand it upright, and then I lay it on its back. And I remove two more screws here on the bottom of the unit. It is important to pay attention to the bolts, number one. On this unit it's pretty simple. Uh, but occasionally there are bolts with washers on them. And you want to keep those washers on the bolt. And you want to return them in the same sequence that you took them off. At this point, if I've done that, I remove the cover, I inspect the coil, I inspect the pump. If need be, I stand the unit up and I put something underneath the foot of it that's about an inch thick if I'm going to run the unit. Everything that we do is about airflow, so I want you to pay attention to gaskets, I want you to pay attention to the fin pattern on this coil. When you clean that off or vacuum that off, you don't want to alter the fin pattern, so you've got to be gentle with it. Um, anything that you do that affects airflow will affect how the equipment operates. The first thing I do in the pump removal, uh, if need be, um, is that I remove the braided hose on the outlet side. This is a check valve. This is plastic and it can break. It's best not to try and crimp the hose above it and pull. What I do is come underneath it with a pair of needle nose pliers and push up and it usually will pop off. If you need to remove the pump, there's two retaining bolts that hold the pump in place. There are ears on this pump so you don't have to re fully remove the bolt. You just need to loosen it and then it will lift up. Uh, there is one on the other side and we'll have to do both of them. Uh, at that point, then we can remove the pump after we cut the wire tie. So the next thing that I do is I remove the clear hose. This is the inlet hose. This comes out of the drip tray and it ends up in the pump. The next thing that I do is, is that I remove the pump and I lift it up. And there is a, a, there is a zip tie on the wire behind the pump and I, I have to clip that, which allows the wire to expand. And I bring the pump up here and I disassemble it here. The first thing that I do is I take the, the cover off of the mechanical compartment. Uh, don't turn it on, but just plug it in and you can see if the pump will actuate and turn on. This is a fan that actually cools the motor and the motor is turning then and normally that's going to pump out. The next thing I do is I remove the uh, basin of the pump. 
There are four screws that holds it in place. Um, just, just should let you know that anything that comes into this unit that gets by the filter, and the filter is pretty good at catching it, but if there's dust, dirt, insects, carpet fiber, whatever it is, uh, is going to end up in the basin of this uh, of the pump, and it does need to be cleaned periodically. You can you can determine that through use. Sometimes it's every job. Sometimes it's every six months to a year. So I pull the basin of the pump off. I inspect it. Uh, you might I just use clean water, flush it out. Um, this is the bottom of the float switch. Occasionally it will actually get stuck in the bottom of the pan, uh, which will keep the float switch from working. Another thing that you need to do is inspect the volute, which is the impeller cover. You don't want the gasket bulging around here. If that's the case, it's either frozen or you've gotten chemicals into the pump and this is deteriorated and you need to replace the pump. The next thing that we want to do is that we want to inspect this check valve. Um, I actually describe it as a small black spark plug. It's a 9 16 inch wrench or a pair of uh, pliers or a small crescent will, will remove it. Um, take it off, pay attention to the fact that um, there is an O-ring on the bottom of this and that needs to go back on when, when, you, when you return it. Okay, the bottom of the, of the check valve actually can be removed. You've got to use your fingernail or a small flat bladed screwdriver and or a pair of needle nose pliers. When you pull out it out of there, there is a small ball in the check valve. You want to inspect the check valve, make sure there's not debris in there, uh, and then reassemble it. When you, uh, when you replace the check valve, I should caution you to tighten it and snug it down, but don't over tighten it. It is possible to break it and or the base or the top of the, uh, of the pump. Uh, it's a little bit sensitive and uh, it's important to snug it down, but not over tighten it. Now that we've inspected the pump or inspected the basin of the pump, uh, we just need to reverse the process and put the screws back in. Uh, it is important when you go to put this back that you uh, zip tie the wire. If you don't have a wire tie, I do suggest that you at least make sure that the power cord gets totally behind or above the pump on the back side. I generally clip this off <clears throat> and tuck this up here rather than in here so that it doesn't force the pump up when you when you tighten it back down. Also important to put this hose back in and I should caution you too, one other thing that we need to do is that this is a drip tray underneath the coil. Uh, a lot of times if you're seeing moisture on the floor it's because this drip tray is either plugged up or partially plugged. Uh, one thing that you can do is to pull this hose off. I take a blunt object and I push it back up in the drip tray. I also flush this out with a spray bottle, making sure that I get all the dust and the lint out of there. Okay, basically after reassembling, you just want to do a quick visual inspection, make sure everything's clean. It's always important with, with all dehumidifiers to pay attention to the gaskets. They are here for a reason. Uh, every bit of airflow that comes into this unit or air that comes into this unit is controlled and directed and these gaskets are very important. Uh, you also want to inspect the gaskets on the cover themselves and uh, pay attention that they're solid and that they're in place. Uh, at that point on this unit I take it and I lay it, lay it down and I start all of the bolts before I tighten any down. Okay, there's one other thing, or actually a couple of things extra that we need to do. One of them I didn't talk about, 
and is that that we want to talk about the filter again. Um, it's extremely important to keep this filter clean because as I've said before, if it's, if it's nasty, it can get in here, it can plug up your coil. Filters are really cheap compared to what they do for the unit. Um, so I encourage you, you can vacuum off or blow off three times and then you need to replace the filter. Do it as needed, but pay attention to it. Okay, this is the control panel. Um, there are error codes that are listed in your manual. Uh, it's important to, to pay attention to them. The most common ones are E4, E9, and E8. Um, E4, there is a separate video that covers how to address that issue. E9 is the pump issue. Um, E8 is uh, usually a bent or damaged panel. And I would say that one of the most common complaints that I get is the customer gets it on the job site and due to the fact that when they were loading the unit or transporting the unit or at some point they're, they're loading stuff on top of the, of the control panel and it bends it. Um, this is electronic. You don't have to force it. You just barely have to touch it and it comes on. Um, Sometimes E8 I'm able to clear up um, by paying attention. Um, the truth is is there is a little post that transfers the physical motion down to the actual switch on the back part of the, uh, of the control panel. You can actually take a pair of needle nose pliers and adjust that post so that it isn't either doesn't have the switch locked on or keep it from turning something on. Uh, really important to pay attention to these, not abuse them. Uh, they're fairly pricey and um, it's just important to take care of your equipment. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, I want you to know that if you take care of this unit, it's really going to serve you well. Uh, one of the best tags that I've ever seen on the unit simply was that this unit pays your wages, take care of it.